Good morning, Ryoko fam. We are here with our second episode of Ryoko Stories. We've got Julian with us, who is Doxa watch collector. What watch are you wearing today? Thank you, everyone. Thanks for having me. Uh, today I'm wearing the uh, Sub 1200T, which was a 50th birthday gift from my wife. See, I don't have a Doxa watch, so I wanted to wear an appropriate watch, the Oris 65, on an orange strap to go, go with one of your other watches, one of the main pieces from the collection with the orange dial. Excellent choice. When did you choose Doxa as a brand that you wanted to start I collecting? I didn't really uh, choose it very early on. I, I right. started collecting, I, I guess like most collectors, on a completely random basis. When they started reissuing them, all of these were references to the older watches, the sub 300s. That's the popular orange dial. This is the professional dial, and it's almost exactly the same watch as they issued in 1967. At the time, apparently very different to any other dive watch. The look and feel that you and I would think of as a classic dive watch, yeah. very much like the, uh, yeah, the yeah. orange that you're wearing. Yeah. That was really defined by Blancpa when they started making a, a dedicated dive watch. 50 Fathoms. The 50 Fathoms. Early 60s or 65-ish? Okay. I, I don't that know the year. It was uh, 53. So okay. the first two dive watches was really the Blancpa in 50 Fathoms, the Zodiac Sea Wolf them in 53, yes. and then only came the Rolex Submariner in 54. Right. This is a reissue that holds very good value. I think Doxa has done it brilliantly well. For the price point you're paying, the quality yeah. is exceptional. As I mentioned, I take yeah. these guys diving, so I think there's a rubber strap option and the Beats of Rice bracelet. Yes, yes. Uh, I've tried them on everything. I've tried them on mm -hmm. uh, NATO's, I've tried them on Tropic Rubbers, I've right. tried them on uh, even uh, leather. I don't dive nearly as much as I'd like to, uh, but when I do, I always put a, a mechanical watch in addition to my dive computer. Right. Not so much for the redundancy and the safety, that too. But uh, just for the idea of yeah. it, uh, I but like it's, dive But it's so watch. cool because these are the things I read about and you're actually <laughs> doing it. <laughs> that time in the 50s, yeah, that's yeah. when diving was, or scuba diving, as yeah. we know, it was invented. Right. Prior to that, you had the diving uh, helmet uh, yeah. with the feed from the surface. In the 50s, when they started scuba diving, which is when you're carrying your oxygen essentially with you, self-contained underwater breathing apparatus, apparatus uh, that's the acronym for scuba, you started getting into all kinds of different constraints. Because you are breathing compressed air, you are limited in terms of the time you can spend underwater. Now, obviously, if you're limited in time, you have to have a watch to time it. Okay. Otherwise, you could get into uh, very serious medical issues and, and safety concerns. So these watches, they they were not uh, fashion items or anything other no, than yeah. a, a life-saving piece of equipment. That for me is the attraction of it. For me, uh, mm -hmm. it made no sense to start collecting, you know, pilot's watches or anything like mm -hmm. that. I, I'm not a pilot. It's yeah. a little bit more authentic and, and, right. and close to what I do for a hobby. You mentioned that you were in the Navy? Yes, spent over four years uh, in the Navy. That's incredible. Thoroughly enjoyed it. You're a bit of a superstar there. <laughs> <laughs> it was an exceptional time in my life. It's a love of the sea that grew from that. What's with the double bezel? What does it do actually? So you'll see the inner bezel there, that gives you the normal count, mm -hmm. timing count for how long you've been underwater. So you can time Right, those are the minutes. The surface, correct. Now when you are doing diving below a certain depth, mm -hmm. Uh, it becomes more of a technical dive rather than a recreational dive. And that means you can't just come to the surface immediately, do a safety stop and, and get out. It means you have to do certain decompression stops underwater for certain times yeah. um, in order to get rid of all the inert gases that you've been breathing. Diving is a very safe yeah. uh, and there's a few very simple rules and yeah. if you stick to those rules, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a very enjoyable, it's a very safe sport. Mm -hmm. But if you start breaking those rules, yeah. things can get very serious, very quickly. Right, quickly. right. Um, so uh, that's why, again, you know, these yeah. things were life-saving pieces of equipment. Right. And then the other thing that Doxa co-invented is the helium escape valve. They invented it? Together with Rolex. On the uh, certain submariners and later on the Sea Dweller. Is that around the time where Jacques Cousteau connection came to being? Or no, was he... Was quite some time after, I, I believe. Jacques Cousteau and his crew on the Calypso they uh, they wore a whole range of dive watches of various okay. descriptions. Blanc pounds, uh, I think in his movie, uh, The Silent World, he was wearing a Blanc Pound. Right. Um, he wore uh, Submariners, Roman right. Submariners, and Doxas. But apparently when uh, when uh, he saw the Doxas, he was so impressed with the watches yes. that he actually um, bought the rights to distribute them in the US. Ah, I see. Uh, through his company, uh, I think it was the, the Aqualung company, and you'll see Right. Some of the issues, uh, they called the black lungs. Yes, This is a sea yes. rambler example that yes. got the uh, 
the Equilung logo there. Do you think that would affect um, the value of the watch, having that logo there or not? Lectus terms, they probably are a little bit more sought after. Like the Comex style? Like a Comex uh, yeah. dial on a Rolex, yes. Yeah. Plus it's uh, more it? functional than the Comex style. <laughs> <laughs> This is the uh, the original um, boxes that they came in. Mm -hmm. um, I guess it was uh, meant to look like a dive. The other connection with Doxas is obviously Clive Custler. Yes. And uh, it was funny you were telling me earlier how um, it's an interesting read, but it's a more casual read, really. Correct. And the movie Sahara was probably more significant to watch collectors to see Matthew McConaughey wearing uh, the Doxa. I think it was on the orange tile. Was as the well. orange style indeed. 